time go. Hey, Mr. Your extended forecast. This is a typhoon. This is a hurricane. What's the difference? Nothing. Hi, I'm Dave Schwartz. This is your Tropical Update. We call them hurricanes on this side of the globe, and they go by the Japanese word for great wind, typhoon, in the western Pacific. Let's take a look at this typhoon. It's a nasty one, packing 140 mile per hour winds. This is Typhoon Maeme and it is headed towards South Korea. Now, I just checked the observation out of Cheji Island, right here. Northeast winds gusting to 71 miles an hour. They'll keep a northeast wind as the eye passes just to their east. Nagasaki, Japan, south wind gusting to 61 miles per hour. That's about as bad as it's going to get here in Nagasaki. The worst will be felt right here in South Korea then it will weaken as it moves over colder waters. That's a typhoon, Typhoon Maemi. Meanwhile, this is Hurricane Isabel, 160 mile per hour winds. And unlike Maemi, this one is not weakening. It's not moving over colder water. It will not be disrupted by an interaction with land area, mountains, for example. It's over the wide open oceans of the Atlantic Ocean, of the Atlantic Ocean. High pressure off to the north, getting squashed just a little bit. There's a trough to the north, but we still have high pressure here, steering the hurricane to the west. Getting closer and closer, inching its way to the Americas. Fortunately, we don't believe it will hit the Caribbean. It's to the north of that. We don't expect this to turn south at all. If anything, west and maybe then a west-northwest track early next week. It's a slow mover, 10 miles per hour right now. By Friday evening, we expect it to be here, Saturday here, Sunday here, Monday here, Tuesday of next week, there. Notice the cone as it gets wider. The uncertainty gets wider out through time. The hurricane could be here, headed this way. It could be here, headed this way, or anywhere in between. At this point, it's too early to tell you whether this will directly impact us here in the United States. But it certainly bears watching. This is a hurricane that's as strong as Hurricane Andrew was when it made landfall in Miami. So it's powerful. Notice this bit of disturbed weather out here. There's relative low pressure out there. That's what could kind of draw this up and maybe send it up the East Coast or off the East Coast for that matter next week. This is actually the remains of a tropical storm that was here last week. Well, the center moved across Florida and stormy weather's just been kind of festering off the North and South Carolina coast, September 7th, September 8th. It just continued, aided by a little upper level area of low pressure right here. But the shower activity just hung around and it hung around and well, we think that could actually be the remains of Tropical Storm Henri. Well, that is forecast to head up the East Coast. Not as any big tropical system, but just as a problem weather maker. Gusty winds along the coast, um, rain, persistent rain as we head into the weekend, mid-Atlantic coast into southern New England by Sunday, and also some heavy surf. So just keep that in mind. But of course, this, the remains of Henri, here off the southeast coast. This is like a Sunday picnic. A Sunday picnic, though, watch it out here on the beaches. But that's like a Sunday picnic compared to this big monster out here over the Atlantic Ocean. Hurricane Isabel packing 160 mile per hour sustained winds. Elsewhere in the tropics, all quiet in the Gulf of Mexico and in the Caribbean. Tropical wave has moved into Central America. If you're your extended forecast.
A Category 5 on the Saffir Simpson scale, Hurricane Isabel continues to move toward the west. I'm Nick Walker. This is your Tropical Update, and you're watching First Outlook. We're continuing to keep a close eye on Isabel as it continues to progress toward Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, the Leeward Islands, but it is going to move north of all these islands. Its current location, 455 miles east-northeast of the northern Leeward Islands, moving a little bit slower now at about nine miles an hour, but still pretty much straight on toward the west. The winds in the center, 160 mile an hour winds with an estimated central pressure of 921 millibars. We're comparing this hurricane to several. Hurricane Mitch, back in 1998, had 180 mile an hour winds. Remember Andrew, a very similar central pressure to what we're finding now in Isabel. Its maximum winds were 175. Hugo, 160 mile an hour winds, very close to what we're seeing right now with Isabel. And it was on this date, back in 1988, that Gilbert made landfall in Jamaica. 185 mile an hour maximum winds for Gilbert. So you see where we're at here. As continuing to move west, it will just bring some heavy surf, we think, to the Leeward Islands, to Puerto Rico, and to Jamaica, the Virgin Islands as well. And over the next several days, we expect it to continue to track a little bit more toward the northwest, hopefully missing the Bahamas, but everyone here along the east coast of the United States needs to keep a close eye on this as it continues to push toward the west. That's your Tropical Update. Kelly? Well, Marshall Cease joins us now from your weather today. And, Marshall, it looks like it could be a very wet day for some cities. That's right, Kelly. Coming up, Dr. John Neese will be tracking the stormy weather in East Texas. We'll have a live report from Houston, too. Plus, travel analyst Dennis Smith will tell you if the rain moving up the eastern seaboard will delay your travel plans. Now, here's Kelly. Well, car dealerships in Europe felt the sting of this summer's heat wave. Linda Bell has details in the Bloomberg Money Barometer. Good morning. West European car sales declined last month as hot weather and anticipation of new models deterred customers. The European Automobile Manufacturers Association said sales fell to over 785,000 vehicles from nearly 824,000 cars a year ago. Demand in France and Italy fell by more than 10 percent. Analysts say August is always a weak month, but a record heat wave discouraged people from shopping even further. The German market also declined as customers waited to see new models unveiled at the Frankfurt International Motor Show this week. Western European sales by Ford, the world's second biggest car maker, declined 10 percent to a little more than 74,000 vehicles last month. For the year so far, sales are down 4.2 percent. Meanwhile, sales at Fiat plunged 16 percent to nearly 51,000 vehicles in the month of August. Italy's August sales figures were the lowest in seven years. For the Weather Channel, I'm Linda Bell with the Bloomberg Mighty Barometer. Up and in your new car, maybe headed to a football game this weekend? Well, we'll be there at uh, Ann Arbor for the Michigan-Notre Dame game. Will the rain be there? Maybe a few scattered showers. We'll see them back toward your west, too, and southward. Rain throughout the northeast. We'll find still some of that lingering on into Sunday. And southward, too, as uh, the Atlanta Falcons are home. The New York Jets are home and may see a shower, too. But notice the cool temperatures back toward the plains as we continue to see 50s and 60s build into the area all week. And, long. and Mark Mancusa says today's a good travel day in the Northeast, but maybe not so in the weekend, right? Yeah, it's all downhill from here, Kelly. As we take a look at our region of the Northeast, uh, we do see a, another nice day in Buffalo, but in Philly, it's clouding up. Here comes the rain for the evening commute. Norfolk, just forget about it today. <laughs> rain, wind, nasty. Forget about it. All right, we'll forget about it. We can. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here on First Outlook. Stay tuned for your weather today. We leave with a shot of New York City looking nice this morning, but not so nice in Texas as the flooding rains continue here. First Outlook is sponsored by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Winds over 100 miles per hour, cars blown off roads, and that's just an F1 tornado. Are you prepared? Go to weather.com slash safeside for more safety information. Outback Steakhouse, a proud sponsor of Project SafeSide. I'd love to buy you dinner. Nice try. I know about the free rebate. Okay. The Swanson Dinner Rebate lets you try delicious fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and sweet corn for free. 50 after the hour and time for your tropical update. I'm meteorologist Rich Johnson. 
Hurricane Isabel continues to churn in the Atlantic with maximum sustained winds at 160 miles per hour. I know a lot of you are keeping a close eye on this. Leaders in South Carolina have already started talking about the possibility of Isabel striking the coast. We're as prepared as we can be, um, but in these kinds of storms, uh, with the kind of uh, you know fear and excitement, all those things that go with it, uh, it'll never be as smooth as you want it to be. Governor Mark Stanford stressed that there is no need to change any immediate plans because of the hurricane, but they will be continuing to watch its movements, as we all will. All right, here's the latest Hurricane Isabel, 11 a.m. Atlantic Standard Advisory that point centered 370 east or northeast of the Leeward Islands. Top sustained winds at 160, category five hurricane here, the highest category which begins at really 156 miles per hour. Anything greater than 155 is considered what we call cat five, category five. And everything is estimated right now. These winds are estimated. There's different techniques when you study satellite photographs, you can get a real good idea about how strong they are. This pressure also estimated, but right now, the Hurricane Hunter is out there. It is on the way northeast of the Leeward Islands. Very shortly, it should be penetrating this hurricane, and we'll get a real good idea exactly how strong it is. We'll probably know that within the next hour, the exact pressure and the winds that we're finding. Again, it's northeast of the Leeward Islands. We expect it to continue more in that westerly course. Then beyond that, that's where it gets a bit more tricky. Classic looking hurricane here. Again, the eye, perfect eye right here. And we're, this is what looks like the hurricane symbol. You see on the weather maps and such, look at this, little edges right there. This is a very mature hurricane, very strong hurricane at this point, and the visible satellite imagery. You can see the eye very clearly. It's a small hurricane though at this point. And some of the strongest hurricanes have been strong, but there's really no relationship size and strength. You can have very strong hurricanes that are very small like that 1935 hurricane that went through the Keys or you can have much larger ones which are very strong like uh, Gilbert. Very strong hurricane of course. Well, as we look at another perspective here, watch this here. This is what it looks like in the eye wall. This picture is from yesterday but we can focus right down into the eye. You can see right down to the ocean as you look right down into the center and you can see the little twist right there that's about exactly where the center of the circulation is. When you get hurricanes this strong, you can have what we call a stadium effect, that as you go higher up, the clouds sort of peel back a little bit and you can see straight down, down to the ocean surface. What's going on here? This is our, another vantage point here, water vapor imagery. Here's the hurricane, the Bahamas, Florida to the east coast. Everybody from Florida up the east coast needs to continue to watch this because after three or four days, we're not certain the exact track. Let me show you why. Off to the north of the hurricane, we have this high pressure ridge. That has been steering it eastward. We have a little weakness or a little trough in the east, but with the cold front in the mid part of the country, we expect that to sweep across the area, and that may nudge the hurricane northward. The big question is going to be, is that going to be strong enough to continue to take it northward, or will that ridge rebuild back in, which we think will happen, and build back in enough to take it somewhere back over to the east coast. So that's the situation in a nutshell there. Again, there's the hurricane out across the mid part of the Atlantic. Again, it's a small hurricane. Looking at the rest of the Atlantic back over to the coast of North Carolina, what's left of Henri disorganized showers and storms, certainly bringing some heavy rain back up into the tidewater of Virginia. Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean Sea looking great today, back over toward the Antilles, other than the heavy surf and heavy waves coming in. Decent day. Back over the coast of Africa, not much happening, and over to the coast of Mexico, some flare-ups starting to bubble up. So one big story, Isabel, of course, will keep you updated. More on today's forecast coming right up. My dad and I aren't exactly alike. Take being outdoors. We do completely different things. But to my doctor, we're the same. Since Dad has heart problems, my doctor said I'm at risk too, even if I exercise. Taking low-dose Bayer every day helps reduce your risk of a heart attack by helping to keep your blood flowing freely. Aspirin is not appropriate for everyone, so be sure to try it.
extended forecast. Welcome back. It's 10 minutes before the hour, and that means it's time for your tropical update. And, of course, all eyes right now on Hurricane Isabel. It is a powerful Category 5 hurricane with winds of 160 miles per hour. It's moving to the west at 9 miles per hour, centered about 350 miles northeast of the Leeward Islands. Well, let's check in with our hurricane expert, Dr. Steve Lyons. And, Dr. Steve, of course, what everyone wants to know is, is the system going to affect the U.S.? Of course, if it does, it's still many days away. What sort of forecasting ability do we have for that time frame? Well, it's at least a week away, more or less a week away, maybe a little longer than that. And our forecast skill out that far is pretty poor, really. But we can say a couple of things about it. Let me show you what we've got here on a graphic that might help out a little bit, Christina. And from that, we can show you that basically there's a couple of things that might be going on. One, a trough along the central United States is going to come toward the east. A high pressure centered in the northeastern United States, it could move east or west. And then the timing of the low pressure system that's coming onshore toward the United States, not necessarily onshore, but in the general direction of onshore, and the timing of all those. So it could either go north, northwest, miss the United States completely, move more toward the west, southwest, or toward the west and hit Florida, or it could head up toward the central United States and hit generally the central, uh, central portions of the East Coast and then slide up to the Northeast. So it's just too early to tell yet what you should be monitoring carefully and preparing as if you were getting prepared for the hurricane season in general and monitoring carefully. But it's really too early to call whether or not it's going to hit and exactly where. But we can say that it is going to go over the next five days in a general westerly track followed by a west-northwest track, Christina. And, of course, it is a Category 5. Do we expect that uh, to maintain its intensity? Well, Category 5s typically don't last that long, usually less than 30 hours. This one has lasted already almost 24. It'll probably wax and wane, drop down a little bit over the next couple of days, stay fairly strong. But the overall environment, as it gets closer to the United States, appears right now to be a little less favorable. So we expect it to remain a major hurricane as a Category 3 or higher, but not necessarily a Category 5. And what, if any, impact will it have on uh, the Caribbean? Well, right now the Caribbean is going to be only high surf, we think, as it moves by. The winds will be light out of the west over the northern Caribbean islands, including Puerto Rico. Could be a little bit breezy out of the west, but the wave action coming from the north-northeast is going to be on the order of 15, maybe even 20 feet. And that wave action will cause what we call wave setup, and that could cause some coastal flooding in the low-lying areas on the north and northeast coast of Puerto Rico and some of the Virgin Islands. And are there any other areas of interest in the tropics that we need to know about at this point? The good news is, is there's not much going on in the remainder of the Atlantic Basin. Eastern Pacific, a low-pressure system, it's rather weak. It's just offshore Mexico and moving away from the coast. So if you're heading to the Riviera, you're fine. And in the far western Pacific, we're in good shape there. The typhoon that was a super typhoon is weakening quickly and moving away from South Korea. All right, hurricane expert Dr. Steve Lyons, thanks so much for keeping us updated, and we'll check back in with you in just a bit. But for now, let's see what's going on a little closer to home, and we are watching a lot of wet weather here through the central U.S. We're 